Hello viewers, I remain Beatrice Christopher from Statistics Scribe. God's willing in these tutorials, I'm going to show you how to perform a Latin square design analysis in IBM SPSS Statistics. So quickly, I have a question here from a course called Design and Analysis of Experiment from the Ahmadibello University area. This is a lecture note. The course code is that 407, as you can see here. So there's a question here we are asked to analyze the results of a latin square design experiment shown below so this is the experiment here from here to here to test at five percent level so quickly all you have to do is just go into your ibm spss statistics the ideal thing is to define your data in variable view but you can actually run it without defining it but i love doing it the ideal way okay so quickly, all you have to do is go to variable view. The first variable here I have is my response variable. In this case, I can call it result since it's a result, okay? So let's say I have results. Then I have a row factor because the Latin square, we have three factors, right? Row, column, and treatment. So I have row. Well, let's begin with, let's say, treatment, okay? Of treatment I have column and I have row okay remember my treatment is nominal right my row is nominal my column also is nominal row and column are nominal then here permit me to maximize so you'd see what I'm doing so here I have treatment, treatment is nominal, my column is nominal, my row is nominal, my result, that's my response is the scores I have is scale, okay? So you can decide to reduce the decimals to maybe zero number of decimal places, since in the original data we don't have any decimal places, okay? And if you like you can leave it, your output to still be the same. So let's say my label is result, treatment here, kindly check our video on the variable attributes explained okay so you'd understand what i'm doing should you not know what i'm doing okay so this is row it's called row then you can switch here i have my results i can enter it right so now let's go back so you'd see the data set this is my data set here so if you observe, I have results, so you can enter your results either column-wise or row-wise or at random, but I usually advise my viewers to either use row or column-wise, okay? So I have treatment A, B, C, and D, so it means on that treatment here, I can decide to code it. For treatment, I can come to my values here and say maybe value 1 is treatment A. Add it up, value 2 is treatment B, you can click on add also, value 3 is treatment C, value 4, let's say treatment D, okay, you can add also and click OK, so we've defined our values. Then for rows, we have four rows, and for columns, we have four columns. So on that column here, you can decide to come here. Say one is column one, two is column two. You can be clicking on the add or hit your enter key, okay, on your keyboard. So three for column three. Four for column four, and you press OK. Then row also apply the same thing. We have one for row one, two for row two, three for row three, four for row four. That's all, and you press enter. So here we can begin our coding here and enter our data, okay? So now, let's say we want to enter our data. 
For example, let's say I want to use column wise, it means I'll enter the data set in column one, data in column two, column three, and column four respectively. So it means I'll have six zero five four six two four seven five zero three nine five three eight one four nine in that order until I get to forty five. So I have six zero, I have five four, I have six two. I have four seven. I have five zero. That's second column. I have three nine. I have five three. I have eight one. Now third column. I have four nine. I have four seven. I have four one. I have three nine. For the fourth column, I have seven zero. I have six nine. I have four eight. I have four five okay so you can cross check your data to make sure everything is entered correctly then for treatment if you observe 60 here falls under treatment a and treatment a was coded one so i have one you can toggle over this label icon here to see the value label cc you can toggle so for 54 54 here falls under treatment b which is two coded two c here is three d here is four in that order okay if yours is not showing this treatment you can just toggle around here so let me just take it back so i'll just be seeing numbers alone then for 50 i have b which is two c which is what three i have d which is four then 81 i have a which is one then for c here which is 49 c stands for three then D is 4, 41 is A, which is 1, then 39 is 2. So here I have 70, which is D standing for 4, 69A, which is 1, 48B, which is 2, and 45C, uh, which is 3. Okay, then quickly, the entry, since I entered it column-wise, that means this first 4 are for column 1, 60 is column 1. 54 is column 1, 62 is column 1, 47 is column 1, in that order. The next thing is, this is column 2, column 2, column 2 in 4 places. So it means I have 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 49 through 39 is column 3 in 4 places. 1, 2, 3, 4 in that order. Then for this, here I have 1, 2, 3, 4. It's as simple as that. Then for the row, this falls under row 1, this falls under row 2, row 3, row 4. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. This falls under row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. So it means I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So all through it to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. That's all. Since I'm done with the data entry, and remember we are to test at 5% level of significance, so permit me to maximize it so you see everything we're doing. The next step is you go to analyze. From analyze, you come to general linear model, univariate. Then from univariate, our dependent variable in this case is result. Okay, you click it. Then for fixed factors, which are treatment columns and rows you can select them at the same time and push them to the fixed factors box or let's say you don't want to select them at the same time or you're finding it difficult you can select them individually like this okay it's still allowed then you can come to your models here as you can see this is full factorial you have to change the specification of the model so it to build terms and using build terms there are no interactions because that's one of the assumptions of latin square design the assumptions is that there are no interactions with uh, between treatment columns and rows okay so quickly you click on this you select main effect so here too there are two ways one way is to select them one at a time which you consume your time that means it's time consuming as you can see here the other way is to select them all simultaneously at the same time and send them so it's going to run a main effect analysis okay so all you have to do here is you click ok 
because the build terms is on main effects no interactions okay so you click ok and you click ok here your result will be out here comes our results and this is our treatment sum of squares 566.75 our column sum of squares 482.25 our row sum of squares 88.25 okay this is our errors these are their corresponding degrees of freedoms mean squares and f statistic as well as the significant values okay at five percent if you notice the treatment and columns and rows are all insignificant because they are greater than five percent which is 0 0.05 0 0.423 is greater 0.484 is greater 0.913 is greater than the level of significance hence there are no significant difference between the treatments between the columns and between the rows okay so among all the treatments no significant difference among the columns no significant difference and among row no significant difference okay so i hope you like this video kindly like share subscribe hit on the notification bell for more updates thank you for watching